Hi, welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, my lesson is on properties of exponents. Our objectives today are that we will simplify expression using properties of exponents, and we will simplify expressions with zero and negative exponents. Here's what I'd like you thinking about today. How can you use a negative exponent to write a fraction as a power? We're going to start with what is a power, and I will note here that this is an Algebra 1 lesson, and my students learned all of these properties and rules in Grade 8 Math. So this is a pretty comprehensive review of everything that students are bringing to the table in Algebra 1. But we'll review it pretty in depth today. So let's begin with a power. A power is an expression that represents repeated multiplication of the same factor. So this is a power. The entire expression is what we call a power, a to the n, where the a represents the base of the power and n represents the exponent of the power. The exponent tells us how many times to multiply the base by itself. Simplest form, you're going to be asked to simplify expressions and you need to understand the rules and what you're expected to do for the expression to be considered in simplest form. An algebraic expression is in simplest form when powers with a variable base are written with only positive exponents and powers with a numerical base are evaluated. So here are some rules. Numerical values must be simplified, no exponents. There should be no like variable terms, no negative exponents, and no parentheses. So we're gonna, when we simplify an expression, we're going to clear parentheses, we're gonna clear negative exponents, we're gonna combine like terms, and all of our numerical values will clear the exponents and simplify them. Let's begin with zero exponents. So any non-zero base with an exponent of zero is equal to one. I do have a video on this channel that explains that using the pattern. So when we look at any base to a pow exponent of zero, so any power to with an exponent of zero is equal to one except zero. Zero to an exponent of zero is undefined. You cannot take nothing and make it one. So let's go through three examples. I'll do the first one, you're gonna do the next two. The power five to the zero is equal to one. Now it's your turn. Please pause the video now, do these two, and come back when you're done. Welcome back. X to the zero is one, and one fourth to the zero is also one. Let's review negative exponents. For any integer n and any non-zero number a, so our base cannot be zero, a to the negative n is the reciprocal of the power a to the n. So our rule is a base a to a negative exponent is equal to flip and make the exponent positive. Remembering that a cannot be zero. That would be undefined. So let's look at some examples here. I'll do the first one. 7 to an exponent of negative 2. So I'm going to flip it, reciprocal, 1 over 7 squared. Notice it becomes a fraction. I put the power in the denominator with a positive exponent. So 1 over 7 squared, to be in simplest form, I have to square the 7, which is 49. So in simplest form, 7 to the negative 2 is 1 over 49. So think of a negative exponent as a way to write a fraction. All right, your turn. Go ahead and pause the video here. Simplify these two, meaning you have to clear the negative exponent. Come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. X to the negative 4, so we're going to write it as a reciprocal, and the exponent becomes positive. 1 over X to the 4th, and you're all done. There's nothing else you can do. Over here, here's a trick. If you have a fractional value inside your parentheses with a negative exponent, flip this, write the reciprocal, and the exponent becomes positive. So now it's 3 squared and y squared, which is 9 over y squared. Moving on to 
product of powers property. This states that to multiply powers with the same base, we add their exponents. So if I have two powers that both have the same base, we go ahead and we add the exponents. Here's some examples. So four, same base, we can add the exponents. So it becomes four, we take the exponents negative two and seven and add them, which is five, and four to the fifth can be simplified to 1,024. Your turn. Try this one. Go ahead and pause and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So they have the same base, so we're going to add the exponents 2 plus 3, which is 5. So x to the fifth. Next property is the quotient of powers property, which states to divide powers with the same base, we subtract the exponents. So a to the m divided by a to the n is equal to a to the exponent m subtract n, again where a cannot be 0. That would be undefined. So 2 to the 5th divided by 2 to the 3rd, they have the same base of 2, so we can subtract the exponents. 5 subtract 3 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. Your turn. Go ahead and simplify this expression using the quotient of powers property, and come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. So we're going to subtract because we have the same base of x. 5 subtract 9 is negative 4. So now we have one more step because it's not in simplest form until we clear the negative exponent. So I'm going to write it as 1 over x to the positive 4. So x to the 5th divided by x to the 9th is 1 over x to the 4 in simplest form. Properties of exponents, we have a few more. Power of a power property. To find a power of a power, we can multiply the exponents. So when I have a power in parentheses raised to another exponent, we, have, we can multiply the exponents. So m times n. Here are a few examples. So my power to a power, 6 squared to the negative 1. So first I'm going to simplify by multiplying the exponents. 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2 which I write as 1 over 6 squared to clear the negative exponent, and it equals 1 over 36. Your turn. Go ahead and pause and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So power to power, I'm going to multiply. So I'm going to do negative 4 times negative 5, which is positive 20, and there's my answer in simplest form. Now we have power of a product property. Find the power of each factor and multiply. So think of it as kind of distributing. So we have two values inside that are not alike. So here are some examples in my parentheses. I have a numerical value and a variable, so they cannot be combined there in simplest form. Here I have two variables, and they cannot be combined or simplified in any other way. So we're going to multiply or raise to the power each value inside and then multiply. So we're going to share 2 cubed, x cubed. Now I need to do one more step because 2 cubed is a numerical value that can be simplified further. 2 cubed is 8. So the answer or simplified version is 8x cubed. Now you try this one. Go ahead and pause and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So again, we're going to share it's x to the ninth times y to the ninth. So remember to be in simplest form, we can't have parentheses. You have to clear those. And now we have a power of a quotient property. We find the power of the numerator and the power of the denominator, and we divide. Remembering that the base b here cannot be zero. So if I have a fractional value, and value a divided by value b raised to an exponent, I can take that exponent raise a to m and b to the m, and then simplify and divide. Here are two examples. I'll do the first one. So this is 1 third cubed. So I can say 1 cubed, 3 cubed. Simplify, 1 cubed is 1, and 3 cubed is 27. Your turn. Go ahead and pause. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back x to the 6th, y to the 6th, 
and that's as simplest as you can get. All right, now it's your turn. We have a pretty complicated expression here. I would like you to apply all the rules we've learned to write this expression in simplest form. Please pause the video and come back to check your work. Welcome back. So the first thing I'm going to do is look for my zero exponents because I know that anything with a zero exponent is equal to one. So anything multiplied by one is itself. So I can just eliminate that from my expression. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write these all as fractional like terms. 8 over 12, here's my x terms and my z. So you can see what I did. I took my numerical values, that's 8 over 12. I have x to the negative 2 in the numerator with an x in the denominator. And then I have z cubed in the numerator and there are no z's in the denominator. So I know that it has a denominator of 1. So now I'm going to simplify each of these and then put them back together. So 8 twelfths simplifies to 2 thirds. They're both divisible by 4, simplifying to 2 thirds. Now let's look at my x term. I have x to the negative 2 over x, remembering that this has an invisible exponent of 1. So quotient property tells me that I can subtract. So I'm going to do negative 2 subtract 1 and my denominator becomes 1. And then I'm going to just leave c cubed. That's as in simplest form already. So now I only have one more step. I have to now simplify these negative exponents. Negative 2 subtract 1 is negative 3. I have another step because I have to clear the negative exponent. So when we rewrite this, it's going to become the reciprocal and the exponent becomes positive. So now everything's in simplest form. I'm going to multiply my numerator, multiply my denominators, and I have 2z cubed all over 3x cubed. How'd you do? Let's try another one. Go ahead and pause the video here and come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm looking for zero exponents first. I find one, and I know that that's 1 in anything times 1 is itself, so I can just take it away. I'm going to rewrite this so that they're all like terms as fractions. So 6 is the only numerical value in the numerator, so I'm going to replace it with um, 6 over 1. My x terms, x to the negative 1, and there are no x's in the denominator. Here's y, y to the negative 1, all over y to the negative 2, and my z's, z to the 7th over z. So 6 over 1 is as simplified as you can get. x to the negative 1, we're going to make the reciprocal, and the exponent becomes positive. So flip it, 1 over x to the 1, which is invisible. And here we have quotient, and we're going to subtract. So negative 1, subtract negative 2 and my denominator is 1. And then here, quotient, 7, subtract 1. Remember, this is an invisible 1 here. All right, so these are in simplest form, and now we get to deal with this. Negative 1, add the opposite. So negative 1, add 2, gives me positive 1, which we don't need to write. And 7, subtract 1, is 6. So now we're all clear. We've cleared the parentheses, we've cleared negative exponents, and now we're going to multiply our numerators and multiply our denominators. So my numerator is going to be 6yz to the 6th all over x. And there you have it. Those are our properties of exponents and zero and negative exponent rules. I'm so glad you joined me today. And I hope you come back soon to the magic of math where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you'll leave me a comment or a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, I hope you do so today. Come back soon and have a great day.